Hey guys, uh, I was gonna post this um, earlier, but uh, I was gonna use what I said in class this morning. Uh, but but then when I pulled up the video, it, it was kind of a mess. So uh, low angle and you couldn't really see the screen. So I figured I'd just do it this way um, because we're familiar with it and it tends to work. So um, so we're doing this deep sea poster project poster. I'm, I'm sorry I'm kind of projecting you to death right now, but um, I noticed from the last one I wasn't I wasn't looking for the most outrageous presentation um, possible. I just want I want some key points. I want you to understand that um, adaptations are behavioral and structural um, characteristics that allow an organism to survive and reproduce in a given environment. So so really anything that an organism has or does is an adaptation that helps it survive and reproduce. So 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 we're kind of doing that but we're doing it in the confines of maybe things that you don't typically see. So we're trying to stay away from I have my picture of dolphins down here. We're trying to stay away from like common everyday organisms. Now there's there's going to be some where you know, if it's what you want to choose, like there's some vampire squid stuff that live in the deep ocean, um, you, you can choose stuff like that. What I'm, what I'm trying to stay away from is just your everyday run-of-the-mill you know, dolphin, which dolphins typically stay in the epipelagic because they're mammals and they can't really go deep for extended periods of time. Um, like swordfish, they can come up and feed. You can look those up, but. But anyway, here's what you're gonna do. Um, so you're doing a project, you're creating a poster, um, an e-poster series, if you will. Um, this could be a slideshow. Um, someone someone emailed me and asked if I could just make a poster and do it. Um, I, you could you could probably do that. In fact, um, this is, I'll bring this up. This is what we used to do in class. Um, and, and, quote, homework. Uh, but basically, they would they would take an, a poster and they would take all the organisms from um, different ocean zones, and then each each person in a group. So they would do all this together, but then each person would have to do specific organisms, um, and they would have to find quite a bit of information about each one. So so in light of being away from each other on COVID and whatnot. Um, it's I, I've kind of adapted it hopefully to where it's not too hard on you but we still get kind of a, a broad range of things so what you're gonna do is create these posters um, and then either um, upload a picture or the um, a document that has like you know each poster if you will um, or a slideshow however you decide you want to do it um, we're going to upload those to a discussion board so people can kind of look through other people's um, and see what they have. So, so here's how it's going to go. You're going to research organisms of the deep sea, so mesopelagic zone and below. So I don't, I don't really want, you know, sea turtles unless you find a deep sea sea turtle. Um, I, I want things that are are in the deeper parts of the ocean. So these are going to be things that look a little bit stranger than most, do some stranger things than most things do. Um, so, so basically the, the electronic poster series is going to illustrate what types of organisms and the adaptations they have um, at ocean depth. So your posters are going to look like this. Um, you're going to have one poster uh, that basically shows the zones uh, of the ocean. Um, I'm going to pull up, uh, let me see if I can yank it off of, actually I'll yank it off the bottom of this real quick. So. So, so this is kind of what I'm looking for for uh, get out of the way, for your um, first poster, right? Um, so the first poster is basically just kind of a, a general, uh, what are the ocean depths? So notice I've got my epipelagic, mesopelagic, epipelagic, epipelagic, right? So it has all of those. Um, and then, uh, so that's part one, right? And then the, the organisms that I'm choosing from each of those zones. now. I'm gonna be lenient on this. Uh, like, there's bathopelagic organisms that come up to the mesopelagic. They're called vertical vertical migrators. There's mesopelagics that go into the epipelagic. Epipelagics that come into the mesopelagic. So, 
So there's some leeway on this. I'm not gonna nitpick you. If you if you have picked three organisms that are really in the bathopelagic or mesopelagic, I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get you on that. I'm I'm not. I, what I want to see is, but but if you do do, let me throw that out there. If you do do three that are in the bathopelagic zone, put them on your picture here, right, so that we know they're not down here. Um, that way we, we kind of understand where the organisms are a little bit better. Some of them, um, it's kind of broad and general that they live, you know, below the bathopelagic. Um, so some might be in the abyssopelagic. Um, so put them, put them kind of where you think they go. If you're not exactly sure where they go and you couldn't find the exact location, um, then, you know, float them somewhere um, close to where you think they are. Uh, but anyway, uh, so put the actual pictures of the organisms in there, um, and I posted a video on, on PowerPoint how to kind of merge you know, pictures together and then save that in the file that you can then just post it to another sheet, but you can do it that way or you can just do your slideshow. And just um, If you do a slideshow, you might save it as a, as a PDF file because then it'll look like kind of each page is its own picture. but. I'll leave that up to you. It just should streamline it so that when we post these on discussions, it might help. Anyway, um, on this guy, you're going to also have general adaptations of the deep sea. Um, so like bioluminescence is one. Um, there's some weird sexual reproduction. Uh, I've given you some links back in Canvas um, uh, that kind of have some notes that talk about adaptations in different zones. So these are just general adaptations that you typically find in any of the zones. Uh, mesopelagic and, and below um, and and what's kind of weird about some of them too is like gigantism is one of them but then also like being really small um, is one of them so some of them are kind of counter um, uh, I don't know how to use it uh, they're yin and yang balanced uh, some some organisms get really big and that's important to them and then some are really small and that's important to them so anyway Write down just, you know, some basic general adaptations of DC organisms. These are things that, you know, you might see in most of your critters. So like the anglerfish can do bioluminescence, so can the deep sea octopus. So um, it's it's kind of things that typically, you know, run in common or that you, you see noticing there. And remember general adaptations. Adaptations are physical or um, biological, or, I'm sorry, behavioral um, uh, characteristics that organisms do to survive or reproduce. Um, then I also want a highlight section of the Virgin Deep Sea Submarine. Um, Virgin means the, the airplane company, um, I forget the guy's name right now on the top of my head, but it's a British guy that, that has Virgin Airlines. Um, uh, he, he's also the guy that tried to do, uh, or is trying to do, um, uh, commercial flights to space. Um, he, he at one point was talking about doing commercial flights to the deep sea, um, and, and that kind of... Uh, talks about a little bit. It's just kind of interesting. I'd like to know um, a little bit about it. So down here, um, you know, I have on my poster uh, what it is. Just tell me who, what, when, where, why, how. Um, and, and really, I'll know if you looked it up. I put a link in there to find it, but I'll know if you looked it up or not because basically um, uh, it's it's something happened to it um, where I'll know if you actually read it or not. So anyway, be sure to include that in it when you see it. Uh, and then, so that's that's your first poster, right? And then let me get this out of the way. Uh, so your second poster then is, um, I'm sorry, your, your next posters in the series then are this number two. Um, you're gonna do one poster for one organism from each deep ocean zone. So you're trying to find Miso, Bathy, Abyssal, and Hadal. One from each zone. Now if, like I said, if if they don't fall into one from each zone, some of them are vertical migrators and whatnot. Um, I'm not going to be too picky on it. Uh, what I don't want to see is this. I don't want to see dolphins. Um, dolphins are epipelagic and will go down deeper. So a lot of the fish that you see um, in the epipelagic zone, which is what we come in contact with mostly, are not fish that you see below that. Now there are a few exceptions. Exception to that, exceptions to that. There's some whales that, that can go down into deeper zones, um, but I, I want the ones that typically live in those zones. So try to find those for me. Um, and again, it doesn't have to be isolated next, next necessarily to um, 
four different zones. If you if you pick two or three from the same zone, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna nitpick you. Know? I just want some diversity. Try to find some different things um, and put those on there. Um, so so one poster for each. So if this were my one poster on dolphin, which you're not doing dolphin, I did dolphin because I know you can't do dolphin. Um, so if say you're doing an anglerfish, he will have his own poster. If you do a dolphin, he'll also have his own. So you're gonna make four posters of four organisms where you basically include um, an in-depth look at the organism from the zone. Um, so you're going to give us the organism with pictures, general characteristics, where they're found, any other inter interesting information. Four posters total. So look what I've done here. Um, this gives you kind of a general idea. I have dolphin. Uh, they are mammals that have adapted to exist well in ocean habitats. Dolphins are prized around the world for their intelligence. Dolphins have been exploited around the world for their skin and tusks. Dolphins don't have tusks and they haven't been exploited for their skin. So I just made some stuff up. Uh, but you'll actually find information. So that's like my general information. Then notice dolphins live in the mesopelagic zone they uh, and eat Snickers bars and Cheetos. No, that's not what they do. Give me a general where they live and what they do there, right? Um, if they are those vertical migrators, it might be that, you know, um, Swordfish live in the mesopelagic zone during the nighttime or during the daytime and then migrate up into the epipelagic to feed at night. Um, that would be perfectly fine. Just kind of some general information about it. Um, then this would be some adaptations. Dolphin adaptations include powerful flippers for swimming and jumping, streamlined bodies for quick movement, and compound eyes for greater vision. So those are just some general ideas about the dolphin that they have. Right, uh, and then and then dolphin actually have an acute sense of smell and are known to have vocabularies that are as extensive as unicorns. That's a true fact. I found found that I actually asked a dolphin and he told me. Um, and then I asked a unicorn if that was correct, and it was actually correct. Which is why I have my rainbow background here because of the unicorn thing. Um, but anyway, that's my interesting information, which that's not true. I'd rather have true information here, so don't make stuff up like I have done. Uh, and then I just put some interesting things here to make it a, a poster, right? Uh, dolphin safe tuna is the best tuna. <laughs> which, yeah, anyway. Uh, and then no dolphins were harmed in the making of this poster. Uh, so so do whatever you want on it, but notice that I have the key elements here. I have, I have general characteristics, I have adaptations, picture of the dolphin, um, where are they? I have the magic, um, the mesopelagic zone here, um, uh, and then interesting info. And then to me, this is visually stunning. So I've made it um, visually stunning. So, so how am I grading this? Uh, your grade is going to be determined by 20 points for each poster, uh, or not for yeah, for each poster. Uh, 20 times five comes out to 100. So if I see five posters that you have and it looks like you've got the information on there, then we are set. So so right now, I mean, if you look at me, I've already I've already got a 40 because I have the title um, poster done here. And then I have my first poster about dolphins. Of course, I wasn't supposed to do dolphin, but you know, uh, whatever. Uh, so so anyway, I've got I've got what I need. Um, so you'd have these, and again, I've I've made this where it's a picture that all moves together, which makes it really easy to just you know if I if I copy it um, and then I paste it into uh, I should say I have a new document here, right? If I paste it into this new document, then then I've got my poster where it's it's one shot. I can see it, um, and it's right there. Uh, again, some folks have asked if they can just, you know, make their own poster, like physical poster, and take a picture of it. Sure, if that if that's what you want to do, you know, go to Hobby Lobby, buy some materials, and make yourself a poster. Um, watch that uh, online poster thing that I made. Uh, if if that's too extensive for you, then by all means, um, do do what's easiest for you. If a PowerPoint slideshow is the easier easiest for you, um, try to make it visually appealing to some degree uh, on each slide uh, and then and then you should be good to go I'm not gonna I'm not gonna nitpick you for the style that you decide to do um, but I do want it to be a little bit nicer presentation wise uh, this time than the last one the last one you were kind of building your own notes this one um, you're you're kind of uh, advertising these dudes to the world because some of these things are pretty cool 
Um, I've, I've also included a list of things that might help you um, on the canvas, so if I didn't mention that before, there's some links on there that can help you find some animals and organisms. If you're having trouble finding something, email me, uh, mtrowbridge at dentonisd.org. Um, call me 940-369-3189. Leave me a message. I'll get back to you. Um, I, I don't want this to be terribly difficult, but um, but I do want you to get it done. So um, so if you need help, reach out to me. Uh, due dates. Uh, I put next Tuesday, which would be Wednesday for B-Day people. Um, so that would be February uh, 9th and 10th. Um, if, if we need a little bit more time, I will extend that date. Uh, I, I will put a, a quick quiz down. Um, uh, actually, quiz after that. So, on that date, 9th or 10th, if, if I feel like we need to extend it, um, then we can. If you're having trouble getting it done, let me know so that I kind of know where you're at. If you feel like you need a little bit more time, because I don't, I don't want you working on this more than an hour a day. Um, you know, 30 to 45 minutes if you can get one done a day that you're supposed to meet with me. Um, you know, that, that would be um, two done, sorry, two done a day uh, when you're meeting with me. That would be fantastic. Um, anyway, if you're having trouble getting it done, let me know. That way I can extend that due date a little bit. Um, but we're looking for, for sure, by the end of next week for it to be done so that we can kind of post some of these and you can look at some different ones and uh, make some comments and stuff. That's kind of where um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, yeah. We'll, we'll talk about that when we get to it, so work on it, get it done. Hopefully it'll be done by next Wednesday. If not, um, let me know if you're struggling and we'll figure out where to go from there. I think I just spent way too long going in a circle telling you the same thing. So I'm going to stop. Uh, I will talk to you soon. Uh, until then, uh, enjoy.